This is one of the best pieces of sushi I have ever had. It is also the most dangerous. Welcome to Japan. A beautiful land blended between two diverse perspectives on lifestyle. I see it as the grandparents meets the grandchildren. On one side of the spectrum, you have Tokyo, a rapid, fast tech scene propelled by scattered arcades, blocks and blocks of karaoke bars, and random experiences like this. I don't know what this is. Then you mix it in with Kyoto. Temples, tradition, a meditative exploration through nature, giving you a deeper understanding of the history behind Japanese culture. Now, as diverse as those two both are, there's one thing that brings the two together, a common denominator that takes away the division, and that is food. And food is one of my worst nightmares when traveling anywhere. Could I get this with the rice? Do I Yeah, put your finger Let's under the. I have a, a nut allergy. Because I'm allergic to dairy, nuts, gluten, and to top it all off, I'm vegetarian. More pescatarian, like I eat fish. But pescatarian, I don't know, it just sounds, it sounds like some sort of weird religious thing. That being said, each of those things also have subcategories. It's because it's not just nuts alone, it's cashews, almonds, macadamia nuts pistachios, peanuts, and probably other nuts. Coconuts are on that list. Some people are like, oh, you allergic to coconuts? It's like, no, it's not part of the same thing. And then along with like gluten, having a gluten allergy, I'm allergic to wheat, which is like baked goods and all the fun stuff and a lot of delicious foods. And then, you know, being vegetarian is just like, so that being said, traveling is a huge hassle for me. And if you're like me and have a long laundry list of allergies, or perhaps you have more, it is super stressful. Right now we're at this incredible restaurant here in Kyoto. And even though it's like authentic and amazing and like such cool vibes, one of the biggest things is like, I have this huge insecurity, like literally freaking out looking at the entire menu because it could potentially have nuts in it. I've traveled the world with carrying around a backpack full of allergies and I can say easily I've never had any sort of big explosive stomach death type experiences on the road because I've been able to be cautious. I've still been able to enjoy my experience without hindering the experience of others because I've been able to follow a list of steps. So let's hop right into that and start talking about how to actually travel with food allergies, or at least how I travel with food allergies. You might have a different process, but this is how I do it. It's great. <music> Shock. Yeah. What do we do? I mean, the first thing would be is to just probably find a hospital or to go find like a pharmacy or something right away. Mostly the chances are I'll survive it and then it'll just be extremely uncomfortable for probably the whole day. The first thing to know about traveling with food allergies is the culture and the place that you're heading to. Now, every place has a different backdrop and the history with wherever you go is usually gonna root within the food that you eat. So for example, I knew a little bit about Japanese cuisine and Japanese culture and I knew that nuts wasn't as primary of an item in like the seasoning as let's say sesame seeds were. But if you were to go somewhere like Vietnam, which I've also traveled to, peanuts is a huge seasoning choice. So to already know what the primary ingredients are to where you're traveling can actually help if you're gonna land there or not. I knew Japanese food had a lot of stuff that I could eat. Lots of rice dishes, fish dishes, fish dish, fish. I knew that ramen was common, but that had wheat noodles in it. So I was thinking maybe they could help substitute it. So understanding the list and culture of the food that you're going into is very important to if you should plan this part of your trip and how to plan accordingly. So for example, if I'm going to somewhere that I know uses nuts everywhere, I'm probably gonna do a little day big planned trip where I'm gonna carry around food that I know I can have by going to the grocery store beforehand. I'm gonna pick up fruit, snacks, different little gluten-free gummies and bars and stuff that I can actually eat so I can be totally energized while we do the stuff that we do throughout the day. But you're like, Zach, I wanna eat. I wanna be part of the whole cuisine experience. That's, that makes sense, I totally get it. And in fact, I would recommend you guys try to 
immerse yourself into that culture. And the best thing I can recommend for that is to translate, to use a translation system that is totally clear and transparent with your server, chef, the kitchen, and whoever you're working with to give you your food. While we were in Japan, I use Google Translate a lot to look at the menus, to be able to translate what was on the menu, what the ingredients were, and it's like insane technology. If you've not used Google Translate yet, totally use it, it's mind blowing. I literally like, I downloaded the app and just like pointed it at so many things. You literally point it at Japanese writing, it'll like convert it and do like this weird glitch thing and all of a sudden like uses AI technology, magic and witchcraft and like creates a render of what it is in English. Anyway, this is a total game changer. You can also type into the app what your dietary restrictions are and it will translate it into that language for you. So then therefore you're eliminating that border a little bit more. But what I found while traveling to other countries, now while I haven't, didn't experience this in Japan, I have experienced this in Vietnam, that the translation of what you wrote in Google Translate sometimes doesn't accurately depict what your allergy is. You might not exactly say that, oh, I have a peanut allergy or gluten makes my stomach gurgle. That can be a bit of a fine line, a tightrope tight rope to walk. So I would recommend as soon as you get to a country, find someone who speaks English or your given language along with the language of the locals and then get them to help you write out a translation list of what your allergies are. So therefore it's super accurate. If you can do this before you leave, even better. I did it when we were in Japan and it was a total game changer. And let's say you feel still a little bit uncomfortable with going out to restaurants. I don't blame you, it can still be pretty scary. What I do personally is I have my go-to list of foods that I know that are never gonna make me feel sick, that are usually not gonna be cross-contaminated and are gonna be totally fine. For example, a glass of water. We can all, I think, commonly agree that a glass of water is relatively safe unless it's contaminated with bacteria. And that way you and your friends are all screwed. What you wanna do is have your list of goodies that you know, no matter what, you're gonna to be totally fine with. So when you look at a restaurant, look at the menu. If you and your friends are all going out to a restaurant, look and see, okay, they have a bowl of rice. I can at least eat a bowl of rice here. Or you know that you can have jelly beans. They have jelly beans on the menu. You're like, great, I'll have my, the jelly beans everyone else can eat. That is so important to have your sort of like be all end all. If I can't somehow translate my allergies or there's gonna be some sort of complications, I know I've had this dish a million times and I know it's totally safe because it's just a raw ingredient. The final thing that I'll recommend to you guys is a big one, but it is do not feel uncomfortable to ask questions and ask your friends or the group you're with to go somewhere else. A lot of the time, trust me, I'm in this boat like 24 seven with whomever I'm with, going out to restaurants is literally the most stressful thing because you're worried that you're gonna make it a, an unpleasant trip for your friends to say, hey, I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free, and vegetarian, can we like not eat here? Um, I get the whole discomfort thing. I've gone to plenty of restaurants that I cannot eat to, had a terrible dining experience, and almost had an allergic reaction, and have had allergic reactions because I didn't say, hey guys, I can't eat anything here. The answer to all of this is to ask, first of all, ask your friends, hey, do you mind if we go somewhere else? And if by chance they say, hey, yeah, I do mind, then they're terrible friends and travel with them. But if by chance you guys go into the restaurant, you've already made that first step in, then the second step is to ask questions for the restaurant and ask them if they're willing to convert their menu to help your dietary restrictions. Too often, there's also that sort of like social anxiety of asking the restaurant if they can modify their dish for you because a, it might be too weird to Google Translate it, or you just don't wanna be a pest or impede on them. But again, it's not going to help anyone if you have an allergic reaction right then and there, and then you have to call the ambulance and then you bad, write a bad review on TripAdvisor because they had nuts in the dish and they said they didn't. So just ask questions, not only to the group you're with, to the restaurant that's serving you, to the server that's talking to you, or the cook you're speaking directly to. And if you can't get clear communication or you don't feel comfortable after that, then don't eat, skip the restaurant, 
and go to your sort of comfort food of choice that you've packed along with you. Anyway, that's sort of my go-to. Again, there's a lot of research that you guys can do beforehand. Let's say you're on an airplane and they're serving something that makes you feel uncomfortable. You can plan beforehand. You can ask about the dishes before. If you know that there's gonna be nuts on the plane, talk to the airline before you hop on the plane. There are so many things and predetermined things you can think of and asking questions is the first step to just being so much safer within the situation. I know because I've been there, I've been on the good side, I've been on the bad side, but overall there are ways you can travel safely, enjoy the culture somewhere while still being able to have fun and, and go to unique places like Japan, Kyoto, to go to Vietnam and explore the little tiny micro areas because if you have the translation right, you should be totally fine. But that's it, that's all guys. I know this is like, for those of you who watch my traditional content on filmmaking or storytelling or whatever, uh, this is very different from what I normally do, but I wanted to give it a shot and try out something that's really close near and dear to my heart, which is obviously talking about allergies. It's something I've dealt with my entire life on a much let much higher scale and a much more consequential level as well. So this is sort of my first dive into talking about it on camera. If you guys enjoyed what I talked about, gained a little bit of knowledge or insight, please let me know. Write that in the comments or give me a thumbs up. Give me some motivation to make more of these allergy uh, driven content videos because it really is something I'm incredibly passionate about and it just feels so good just to get it out, just tell you guys about this thing, this anxiety, this like crazy thing that for some reason makes so many feel, so many people feel the social, ugh, makes so many people feel this weird social anxiety with. So that's about it. Let me know if you guys are interested in more of this type of content. You guys know what to do. If you do like this content, you can hit a little button over there, get more information on it. You can also hit another button, which will then give you updates on all of this content that's being published and posted out. And that's it guys. Eat well, travel often, and uh, or travel, eat, eat often, travel well. I still gotta figure out some sort of good tagline. We'll just say, do everything in moderation.